Okay, so welcome everyone to the next episode of our Coffee Breakdown podcast. Today I have two very special guests, uh, Maria Morve and Laura Fumagalli. So they're both PhD students here at Differ in the Netherlands. Uh, Maria is working on hydrogen retention in liquid metals, and Laura is working on hydrogen retention in solid tungsten. So both of them are doing very interesting work for, for fusion in general. But this episode, we're going to do something a little different. I've brought these two on specifically to talk more about the experiences of being a woman in science. So Maria and Laura, welcome to the podcast. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Sorry for having us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Great that you both could be here and uh, agree to do this recording. Um, and I think I want to preface this conversation by just saying that of course, this topic is a little bit controversial. It's a hot topic. And I just want everybody to be aware that neither of you nor anything that we discuss is meant to represent all women in science, but maybe through sharing the experiences and your stories that there might be some commonalities that uh, other women can uh, relate to. And also by having both of you here, perhaps you can share what is common and what is actually different between your experiences and we can hopefully have a uh, enlightening discussion from <clears> this. <throat> so so let's start there. Um, maybe uh, let's we can start with Laura, I guess, mm -hmm. both of you um, to share a little bit about how you got into science, the background and you know what what inspired you to stay around and get to this level of doing a PhD. Yeah, so I think that I was always been interested by science since I was really, really young, especially because I have my father, he was a researcher. So science always been a part of my life in a sense. And I always I always admire his work because I always thought it was really interesting and I saw him really passionate about it. And I remember I thought like, yeah, I would like to have something like that. So a work that's like you can enjoy your life but also like that you're really passionate about and it was really it was really a good example for me so then <clears throat> I always also be like my be the, the best like math was my favorite subject I was like really performing the best with science and scientific matters so yeah then I always kind of like felt, felt like it was my my way to my my roads and then I applied to physics because I really didn't know what to do. <laughs> so physics, like between the science, it was kind of like the most generic one. It was difficult, but after that, you could kind of choose like whatever. And <clears throat> so I kind of like spoke with this a friend of my father. He was a physicist and he like really like um, kind of like said this to me because I actually thought like physics what you do you just do I don't know a teacher that's what I thought but like actually speaking with people that were like researchers I really understood better like what studying physics was and yeah <clears throat> then I so I started physics at uni in Milan and uh, in Milan Bicocca and it was really uh, hard <laughs> and my experience there was like I think the like women were like 50% of the class and I never felt like a minority. In my high school, I choose the scientific um, uh, high school that, that in Italy we have like scientific, linguistic, classic with Latin, whatever. And I choose the scientific. And the in, in my specific class, the girls were like the minority, but it was not a common thing between a whole the classes. So I never felt like yeah, I'm doing something strange for a woman. And also like during uni, I also never felt like it was strange for me because we are really 50-50. Then I decided to go for fusion because I was really uh, into this, trying to in, like make the world a better place thing. <laughs> and I was really like also plasma physics, like the theoretical, like whatever, it's really interesting, it's really nice. And I was really like the, um, in general, the um, experimental part of it, it's really interesting. And so, and then when I did fusion, I uh, in, um, in, I also did the master in uh, Milan. And also in that case, there are there were other bursts, 
we were really like six people actually doing this master, but three of us were girls, so still 50%. And, and yeah, so then I moved here because I found this opportunity and I really wanted to move out from Italy uh, because I want a better opportunity for my future. And I also felt like I wanted to explore the world more. So, and I I came to the Netherlands for tourism a while ago, and I was like, I fell really in love with this place. So when I found this opportunity here, that was like a PhD on fusion, and it was experimental. I was really happy. So I moved here, and here I kind of like so a more, more like mm, disparity in the numbers. So like. Um, now it's just me and her being like the only beauty girls in the group. And I also speaking with other people, I realized that here is really not common for girls to do science. Um, and yeah, that's. Yeah, that's very interesting because yeah, throughout your entire, I guess, progress through science that you've always had other women around, uh, not only as classmates, but also as um, like, yeah well, you can look up to yeah um, exactly so also our teachers there there were a lot of women uh, and in, in any because you have astrophysics you have bio, biology physics you have like medical physics you have all the physics whatever and always there were some women doing something in sense and so I was I was never I mean I always I always felt that was my place and yeah I mean, yeah, that's that's a very interesting thing. So we're gonna touch on that, I think, throughout the conversation for sure. But I would like to also now give the, I guess, the floor to Maria to share her experience and the background and how she got into science. Yeah, so my uh, story is a bit different than Lara's, <laughs> but I wanted to be a doctor my whole life, basically. And then uh, in the last year of high school, I had to choose between physics and English or biology and psychology. And I went for biology and psychology. And then two weeks later, I was like, nah, this is not what I want. So I switched classes. Um, and then my classmates in the physics and English was, we were like 25 people. We were four girls, I think. So uh, <laughs> really not that many. Uh, and then uh, I decided to, so I didn't even know which engineering schools there was there were in Portugal. Uh, but I was like, okay, if I'm doing physics now, it means that I really like physics, so I will do physics. Then, you know, which university to go to? And I saw all oh, physics and technology. Sounds cool. And then <laughs> I went. So that was uh, not much reasoning, I guess. Uh, and then uh, I had a bit of a tough time in my bachelor. It was also quite hard. I even thought of you know, giving up and then stopping in a master's as well. Uh, and we were 60 people and 15 girls, I think. So uh, not 50% for sure, but a bit more than <laughs> here in the Netherlands. Um, and then, okay, I went to my bachelor and then remember that we had this week that the students organized where the professors would talk about their topics so that we know what we can do uh, after the bachelor's and students a track for the master's as well. And I remember that I was very bored with all of the talks except fusion. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the only one that I was very interested in. So I said, okay, I went to fusion. There was no fusion master's, but there was a plasma physics master track. So I, I went to that one. But the first semester of the master's, uh, to be sh to be sure that I had like the best experience, I wanted to go abroad. So then I said I thought maybe giving up. Uh, so I came to Eindhoven, and when I came here for just for a semester, I enjoyed it so much, and I found out that they had a master's just for fusion. So I decided to stay. I applied. I got in. Uh, so I did my master's already in Eindhoven in physics and another master's in fusion. So it's a combined master's. Uh, and then when I was studying. Fusion, I knew that I really liked liquid metals or superconductors. Uh, so I did an internship in superconductivity. And then uh, I did my master thesis in liquid metals. And I was like, yeah, OK, I like liquid metals more. And then it, it uh, happened that when I finished my master thesis, there was a vacancy in liquid metals here in DIFER next to the end of a new university. And so I thought, this is perfect. So then, and then I continued, because I really wanted to stay in Fusion. I knew that. And the only a viable option of saying fusion for me was to do a PhD. Hmm. That's interesting. So like I already see a difference in there that like Laura went into it because sort of science was what she was good at and her kind of her path, whereas 
for you, Maria, it was like it was specifically fusion. It wasn't like science as well. It was the, the concept of fusion was interesting. So that's yeah. also pretty cool. That okay, but it is interesting then there's also this disparity between what you two have, let's say, um have gone through the whole education system, how many women you were, let's say, in contact with or or seeing. Uh, do you think it plays a big role in sort of your mentality of being a woman in science? Or is it just something you noticed? I felt it more in my master's because here I was the only girl with the master's in my year. <laughs> Uh, and also it was a new place, so I wanted to make girlfriends, you know, and I didn't, and usually I had friends from my studies, so I was like, okay, how can I meet other girls? And then when I started PhD, again, I was the only girl in doing a PhD at Differ, uh, in fusion department. And then I heard that Laura was coming, I was so happy, I was like, oh my god, we're going to be best friends. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and start <it's tired>, with <laughs> Rob. <laughs> so then she texted me that in Italian, that I replied in English, and she never replied back. And I'm like, okay, maybe not best friends after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's also yeah, it's also different when you just meet somebody, right? And it's like you have to figure out how you how you interact or going to interact with each other. I agree. Yeah, but I but, don't I don't think we just bond that much because we were girl, we are girls. I think then we kind of like have a lot of fun in common yeah. in, in general. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the fact that you're both women in science is already one but I'm sure there are other things like your interests and your you know things you've experienced in your life so that that helps but do you find do you find that it was easier to connect with each other because of this that shared experience of being a woman in science or was it other things in life or, or that that um really kind of allowed you to bond no, I, I think it, it was like for sure an important part mm -hmm. because like we kind of share some experience and we also sometimes have the same problems. And so it, it, it is nice to have something that someone else that kind of understands what you're going through and like your point of view. Maybe if you tell like someone one of your problems and this person doesn't really know what you're talking about, he's like, yeah, whatever. Not even a real problem, but like we kind of like know when maybe you have to deal with like older guys, they have a certain like attitude again, like with us. So, and, and I mean, she knows and I know, and like we support each other without having to explain too much to <laughs> them. Um, mm. Yeah, so I think it helped. Yeah, I think that it, it being the two, the only two girls in different doing the fusion PhD is, was already like a very good start. And then we had a lot of other things in interest. Yeah. Yeah, in common as well, so it's nice, but for sure it really helps starting a friendship. You know, you're just like, oh, that's someone that looks more like me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but so I think I think you raise a good point there in that it's it's more like the sh the fact you know the other person has probably dealt with it before means you don't have to explain as much because mm -hmm. I could imagine there's some topics or some events that happen that it's really hard to explain to somebody who's just never experienced it, right? Like I, I can imagine it's hard. And although it's worth it to explain, it's also something like, you know, it's going to take a long time and they're not going to understand and whatever. Right. So do you, do you, do you have like, I mean, I don't want to incriminate anything or anyone, but like, do you have like experiences, like concrete ones that you are willing to share that is not something, let's say an average guy would understand uh, maybe uh, so I was doing some um, I, I, was, I was supposed to do some experiment and um, I I just had to go to uh, this research center to just really do actually nothing because I was not enough expert expert to, to do the measurement itself so it was just me going there to do nothing and I already did it so I asked my supervisor by the way she's also a woman <laughs> um so maybe can I can I just I mean I have a good kind of relationship with the guy there and I was like can I just ask them if they can do it for me without me going there and do nothing mm. and, and she was like yeah you know when you are a girl you have to be careful because sometimes like people can say like 
you are nice, so you ask, uh, you just ask, and people just do your job without like just because you are a girl, because whatever, and they do the job for you, but you don't want people to say that, so you have to do it by yourself and go there. And maybe if it was a guy, there was not this problem. And like I remember also you had this problem maybe um, because you wanted to do the um, experiment in differ from Portugal. And I don't know. I remember you told me you felt a bit like insecure on asking because you didn't yeah. want people to do the job for you and like just because I don't know if it was for that, like specifically because you're a girl. Or just because you don't, you didn't want to ask other people to do the job for you. Uh, I have a bit of, a bit, a bit of both. I, mm -hmm. I cannot really remember this moment specifically, but yeah, I think I can relate to that as well. Uh, it's because we are women sometimes. It's like I, I've, I've been told like, oh, you're a woman, so people do stuff for you. Yeah, and yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. But it's, yeah. I mean, and not because I'm a woman. I'm also nice, and I also do stuff for <laughs> other people. You know, I, I give and take. You know, it's, it's not just. I'm just smile and get stuff done, like yeah, but doing anything myself. Also, it's not even that like if it happens or it doesn't happen, it's more like the fact that you have to think about it. Yeah. That is like annoying because I was like, yeah, if I if I was not a girl, then I would just ask this guy and just do this experiment, whatever. But now I have to just think about all this stuff and like I have to kind of like prove always like I'm here because I can do stuff and not just because they like I'm a woman yeah. and they needed some women. <laughs> no, yeah. no. So sometimes also uh so I know like there was another um uh, student um applying to the same PhD as I did and he was a guy and he was a girl and I was selected and uh like I've heard several times like ah oh, you know you are because you're a girl you get selected. It's like they're like okay maybe that's not the only reason, right? It's not very nice if you hear like that you're also selected because you're a woman. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I just maybe to to sort of interject, like just with the. I don't know. So obviously that's your experience, and it is what it is in that sense. But like I'm curious if that's not also be just because like there are fewer women in these fields, and so like the the experience of just being someone who is kind of like already different or less outside the main group kind of magnifies the experience in some ways, right? Uh, for, for both ends, like for, for you on the receiving end and also for, for the guys you interact with, because they kind of say like, oh, there's already so few women in science. And so we should, you know, encourage them to say, stay, and we should be more helpful. Right. Like we should be helping saying yes whenever they but not because I would say yes if a guy asked me, but I'm actually saying yes because we we want to help them, right? Disproportionately, some would say. Do do you think that that dynamic affects the experience that is actually like both ends? Like maybe some guys would actually want to say no, but then they have more pressure to say yes because it's a woman asking. No, I, I don't know, maybe, but I really feel the fact that sometimes I do stuff because I want to prove myself. And I'm like, I want to prove that I'm not just a girl. Like, and I'm, I mean, that doesn't know what, what, I, what, what I'm doing. Or like, if I have to ask help for something more mechanical because we are both experiments are like screwing, doing whatever. I really want to do it myself because I want to prove that is I can do it. It's not a problem for me. I actually like it also, but maybe sometimes you won't do it because it's not your real job. Maybe there is like someone that is actually uh, know how to do that be better because he knows better the machine. Uh, but still like I want to, I don't know, and dirty <laughs> and yeah yeah you want to you want to like, like do stuff by like myself i have no problem also mm. doing like that more mechanical things and yeah. and it's a bit not it, and maybe sometimes i think people were are more like yeah maybe you want help and we should do it for you and and that's i think what happens sometimes 
but I don't know if like some men feel more pressure to do what I ask because they are because I am a woman. I don't think so though. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't know myself um, because I guess you you have you're more on the receiving end of that of that than than I am. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But do you think that it plays a big role in you deciding what you ask help for or what you do? Um, do you find that you have to be, let's say, spending a lot more energy thinking about these things instead of just, you know, doing it like normal, I guess what normal people would do? Do you, do you find it disproportionate that you spend your energy thinking about these these topics? Well, to be honest, I don't, I don't think I feel the same as you. Like, I never seem like, oh, I cannot ask help because I'm a woman. Uh, you know, it's like, if I need help, I need help. If I don't think I, I need help, I won't ask as well. But, um, so then I don't have this pressure to put like this. Yeah. I think there's, I experienced some uh, different pressure, which is like, when I went to a conference, I had no idea what to wear. Because, you know, mm. like, men is, like, all my colleagues that were going with me, they were men, and then he knew what is expected from them. Then I even asked my supervisor, like, what should I wear? And uh, he's like, well, I don't know, whatever you want, but usually women are uh, judged, judged more harshly than men. So maybe better to go a bit more formal just to be sure. So that was a, yeah, that was the first time I think I really felt, uh, okay, I'm a woman and I'm in a different position than everybody else. What should I wear? I mean, I know it can sound a bit like uh, superficial clothes and everything, but you know, you want to present the best of yourself when you're in a giving a talk in a conference. So. I mean, that's an interesting choice of words that you say, uh, or at least you you have the idea that women are judged more harshly than men, especially in this conference setting, perhaps. Um, or, and maybe in other settings too. Do do you think that's a, is that a commonality? Do you think that it is that way, or like what what comes behind that statement? Uh, so what what's your question? Sorry. Do you think that women are judged more harshly than men, or is it your experience that you've been judged more harshly than, let's say, your male colleagues? um well yeah so by experience as well uh to be honest um yeah i don't give an example which yes uh, has happened yeah also sometimes it's a bit hard because uh already few women are in science but also in, like you can you can think that like Actually, it is really open, like this as an environment. But it's also true that there are like some stereotypical things that people kind of like want to see in a scientist. Mm -hmm. And like already being a girl is like maybe not super normal. And then if you also like take care of your like how you look, it's also even more strange in a sense. So maybe you feel like yeah, I should just not be like look super nice because of them it seems like i'm pushing on that side or i'm i don't know i i will look in a certain way so then you don't like maybe like do this stuff but then you feel not super good about yourself and hmm. yeah it's a bit hard sometimes because you don't like you you don't know what to do to be the best, like to, to give them the right impressions. And because also on the other hand, like women are usually judged more harshly. So we, they expect that women take care more of themselves than men. Yeah. So like, you know, that bot is cool, but uh, a woman, like the, the wife has to be in shape. So yeah, and as if it's, but if you do it, science. maybe then they think like it's mm -hmm. just, uh, it's, but I think, it, I think it's a, like you have both things. Some people like they should maybe not. Uh, yeah. so much and they're wasting all this time yeah and exactly. I'm like, you know, they should take more uh time to take care of themselves I mean, i've been told that uh like it's like okay thanks yeah like for for myself like the best i could say because just i don't have these experiences that that way um it's like is it the fact that i uh, okay i don't want to say you're different but like you seem different just by nature that you're not male um 
have like an amplifying factor. So like everything you do seems to be on blast just because you're different from the normal person in the yeah, field. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, no, no matter what decision you make, it's going to be sort of like taken to that extreme. So if you, if you look good, then you're trying too hard or you're, you know, trying to make an impression, not through your, the science, but through your looks. But if you don't put the effort to look good, then people will make judgments on you the other way, being like, oh, look at this person. They're, 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 they have this unique opportunity and they're not even taking it seriously, yeah. right? So yeah. it doesn't matter what you choose, it's going to be brought to that level. Do you have that sentiment or is it, is it really there is a best decision? No, yeah, I think I think it's more that. Hmm. And that's even a bit worse because then you don't know how to, like whatever you do, it's wrong. In a yeah, sense. it's going to be judged. Yeah, it's going to be judged. Um, do you think it would help uh, to have more women around, kind of like to set the standard of what is acceptable, what's not acceptable, plus to normalize, you know, just like the diverse diversity and like women's choices in terms of this aspect and others, D do you think that that would help or is it not the solution? Yeah, I think it would help a lot. No. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. if you see more women, then you know, then you also see more diversity. Yeah, within I, the women, right? So you have more numbers. Yeah, I think that more like the more you see, more you think it's normal and you're you're you can do it mm -hmm. and like. What I experience in Italy, we have a lot of like really famous scientists that are women, good, really good examples. So it's it was like from Italy itself. So you've always been you. I mean, I always been inspired by them for sure. And um, coming here, like it's it's nice to see uh, to have like some like other women around that expert like like they set the example for you, and and also you being the example and. Mm. Yeah, I think that's for sure uh, something that that had. Because it's interesting for my, like just from sitting from where I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying is that like you, Laura, have had more women in sort of like the professional slash education environment throughout your progress and Maria less. And there seems to be some disparity in how you think about, you know, your experiences or even how much you 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 put emphasis on that particular aspect due to the fact that you had different exp different experiences going through let's say the educational process do you think that plays an important like if you think 50 50 is the answer do you also see that it's having an effect on your own mentality now like the experiences that you've had before Yeah, I think that's for me, uh, for sure, I it was like already you have you are like really under pressure when you're doing physics because it's really hard. And it's really hard also to, to feel like you are enough for that sometimes because pe some people are really smart and like you are, there's always someone better than you, that's for sure. Like, but it's still like hard to be like, yeah, I'm enough for this and I can do it. It's like, it's, it's hard. You have to do it. And you also plus that you also have the fact like I'm not I, I like I don't and I'm, I'm a woman so it's also like maybe I should not be here you know if you also put that you also have way more pressure so for me maybe it was easier because I didn't have this second pressure I, I just had the first one right. and and for Maria I guess it was harder yeah but I never felt like I didn't belong because I was a woman okay it was more feeling lonely a bit but not like. In a way, like I had a lot of guy friends, it's fine, but there's just some things with the like to talk with other women that it's just different. I cannot explain, I cannot put it in words, but I've talked to other, my friends and they say the same as well. Um, and I just miss that a little bit, and I miss it more here in Netherlands because when I moved, I didn't have I didn't know anyone, right? And then I only get hard to know guys very easily. Well, back in Lisbon, it was not a problem because I had my girlfriend from high school and all my cousins are girls as well. But I never felt like I didn't belong. So that's quite nice. I never mm. felt so unwelcome. It's more, um, I just, yeah. Just yeah, well, I guess. One of the jokes about that I only got in uh, from my PhD because I'm a woman. Mm. That's that. 
a bit hurtful, but as you said, they all, they also are pushing for this 50-50 or uh, better gender equality, uh, which indeed then gives you an advantage as a woman, but mm. it gives you an advantage on paper because there's unconscious bias, right? And we are doing this to get over that bias. Maybe now we are compensating a bit too much, right? I mean, these policies, but we need to do it. Maybe now like overshoot and then go to a better... Um, yeah. Policy middle, but then yeah, and this then we have to overcome these biases that have come that have been around for so long. Yeah, I guess this opens the door to it to, to another topic which I wanted to talk about is like what are your thoughts on these sort of preferential hiring policies, right? Like that, um, that they are trying in what you say to push more for 50-50. Of course, they have to selectively advantage women in the hiring process and the selection process. What are your thoughts on on doing it that way uh, or the whole thing in general? Yeah, I, I think it's really, so it's obviously like if you, we, we want equality and for equality, you should treat people kind of in the same way, but it's also true that um, you need to push a bit to arrive at to equality right now and you could you could wait that naturally people just start like slowly to understand like and to open their mind but it's also faster in a sense pushing in this way and I, I get it's not super nice especially if you are a woman you're higher and then you get just feel like that I, I also had this feeling honestly because my Supervisor, she's also a woman, and sometimes I felt like, yeah, maybe she wanted to give another girl uh, a chance, and I don't know, I, I she would probably never tell me, yeah, choose you because you're a girl, obviously, but um, I I was for sure qualified, and I had all the the, the what what I needed to have to be hired, but there are so many other candidates that maybe that was like one thing that helped me. That could be. And I, I feel sorry sometimes for that. But I also like, at the end, if I just look at the thing in general, I really agree with her. So it, now it's a moment in which maybe we should be a bit unequal in the sense that we hire more women. But just because it's really important to have like a representation, I was saying. And so then if you push that way, then probably hopefully in the future it will not be uh, needed anymore. And I know it's not maybe super nice to like hear and and know that maybe if you're a guy or not, they didn't hire me just because, or but also on the other way, when you're a woman, then you, you feel like you have to just show more because you have to like justify why they, they had you and not other people, not other guys. So in general, it's not super easy as a situation and it like put a lot of pressure, but it's also like kind of like, it's 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 uh, it's useful. It's it's needed. Yeah, what I see is that we are uh, writing down that being a woman is an advantage, but unfortunately, being a man is an advantage. So then we are canceling them. You know, so that's why I see it's okay. And I I also think that, like as I said, I was a bit lonely, right, before uh, like in a relationship with girls when the Polaro came, and you know that makes your daily life in your job less uh, enjoyable right mm -hmm. so just having other women that go through the same and that's you know you can connect more easily and then have more similarities with you that also makes the uh work environment nicer mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah maybe if you're so lonely in your job let's say or you know, and not, not that long but if you enjoy it less then you have kids and okay well again i don't enjoy it so much my work so uh, i will stay home but if you make it the work environment even nicer like okay i really enjoy my research so uh it's of course not just the people but it's also the people right yeah. mm -hmm. uh, especially in hard times <laughs> yeah so you know you yeah so i think you give a, it, women also more of a chance and to stay yeah also i remember one time you told me like when you have made the uh, colloquium like an interview uh and like all the people all the guys like are, that are interviewing you are guys you can like mm relate more if you're a guy also yeah. and it's easier for you to click in a sense like it was maybe easier for me with Beata because like my supervisor because she was a woman and maybe and she's also not from the Netherlands so we have a lot of points in common and I think in a sense maybe she saw her in me 
herself in, in me or something like that. Yeah, that gives you an advantage. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, but most of the people not having a guy. Yeah, eighty percent so, of the time is the other it's the other case. Like, yeah, no, it's it's funny that you mentioned that because I was also just reading like the hiring um advice, let's say, from the TUE. Because there's some PhD candidates that that John, that my supervisor has asked me to help him do the selection for, and it actually does say in there to like be aware of your implicit bias, right? Like to to know where who you are and what you've had, and try to stop yourself from hiring people just because they're like me or you see yourself in them, right? But then you you say that, and it seems like it's kind of like. It's okay for someone to do it and okay for not okay for other people. I'm not yeah. gonna get into Maybe that. It, it, it just but, depends on what you see. Like if you see yeah. something that you recognize has a good sign, like someone that has passion, and maybe if it's a bit shy or maybe it's a bit, I don't know. But if you recognize that and then you know, ah, I also do it, but it's not because I don't care, but it's because I'm shy or I I don't know, I don't want to do give this impression. So I say some certain stuff. Yeah. So then maybe you it's it's better you're you're like ah oh, but it's like you're you're actually like the real you is is this because I also recognize it that you're like me but it's still like dangerous because but it's very hard like when you don't have uh like requirements really simply written for the job you also have to go with your gut feeling yeah right mm -hmm. so what is your gut feeling I mean it's like kind of you can yeah. so it's yeah. gonna be biased so yeah. and if you get men hiring it's more easy for them to connect. With the women, uh, with mm. the men, sorry. With the men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I was already thinking the next thing. Okay, if men maybe have daughters, already can help. I don't know, whatever, but it's already... Uh, well, I mean, yes, I mean, that, that is that is a good point that like men who have other women in their life in a significant way um, kind of are at least able to understand a little bit more of mm -hmm. what women are, are going through. Of course, they will never fully understand it, in my opinion. Um, because yeah, they just don't live it every day, but at least they have some, some, some more idea of what's happening. Right. So there is that point and just understanding the implicit bias, uh, understanding you have it is already a good step in trying to prevent it from coloring your choices. Um, but I, I think I want to go back to something that you brought up is that, um, what was it? this sort of like pushing for 50-50, uh, at least some of the arguments against it is that there are already fewer women in the pool of candidates even who apply for a position. And so even though you're kind of like have the, the mandate, let's say, to strongly consider the, the woman applicant, there there's just fewer of them right so it becomes a, a very difficult thing people in the past have kind of said that well that's why we should target at a younger age so that you know as they grow older they don't have this stigma to apply enter participate and then the pool will grow bigger and then the problem solves itself but obviously as you as you know, that if you just kind of target the next generation, then that's not effective because they still don't have any role models now, right? <laughs> so how do you how, how do you see all of that? Like, do do you do you really see kind of this overcorrection as a necessary step? Kind of like, okay, it's not ideal, but we have to do it or do you see it really as this like no this this is not just like a necessary evil this is actually for the like this is the best we can do right i think it's a necessary evil right because then also it uh, opens the door for the the colleagues who think that you're only going because you're a woman so then mm. you can also be less respected because of that um so we have to be careful that's that doesn't happen as well, you know. I think if we explain well that we have to put these, uh, also for future, I feel like now maybe we are being penalized. Uh, be it, so not having the best experience, but at least we can go into science. But we don't have maybe the best experience because we have to go through this um, selective process that is pushing for women. Okay, so mm -hmm. then maybe we will feel like ah, oh, maybe we should not have gotten these if we were men, or our colleagues would feel that. But 
I think this will be good for the future generations, and that's right. for the future uh, girls, you know. The, yeah. In- well, like even even as you said, like having been selected in the environment where this these policies or this this pressure is in place has kind of impacted you maybe not severely but at least the thought has crossed your head that maybe i was just chosen because i'm a woman right and so well, it, people say that but i it does not cross my mind i don't think that ah, okay it's like i don't like people saying that but i i don't think that's okay I, you know, I uh maybe now i sound a bit uh, i don't know but i yeah. have trust in my abilities i think i think about that and that's why i actually think that the best would be uh, for sure, starting before with education and just try to involve and just to do like the few women that are already in science do more like speaking more and like show to, to be an example for other girls. That's for sure. Like something I would really push more, but like, and I also I agree with this 50% thing, like, but with, with the limits. So, I don't think like that. I, I just think if you have two candidates and they are both good and they are both like they all have what, what they what they need to have at one point, usually people are like there is not just one that is super good and the other like oh shit. Mm. So usually there are like like a few that you are that, that can be okay. And for sure I would all, I would I would consider one of them is a woman and maybe just go with her to to give her a, sh- a chance. Yeah, maybe mm. she also needs to go to a rough of uh path to get to the same place right there there. yeah yeah well this is this i will no no i see i see but i don't i will not push it too much because then if you take something uh, sorry if you if you um if you uh, um if if you choose someone a woman that is not uh, enough for the job maybe just because she's a woman then you do like you, you do uh, it's not it's not it's not good either because then you can like you give the wrong impression and then people are like oh okay so she's she's not she was not actually good for this or she's not so so she's just here for that but she doesn't have any other like good quality and and she's not enough and whatever so actually then you do it for and then you have like the opposite from maybe i don't know yeah yeah, well, I, I, so I agree with you. You shouldn't just be selecting women just because they would like they should fulfill at least the requirements of the position, um, have have the have at least some, you know, chance of doing that that job well, right? Absolutely. But I think there's a bit of like nuance here because, oftentimes, I would say the history of how they got to there plays a big role in where they are at the moment, right? So if someone has to continually fight against the the stigma, quote unquote, of being a woman in science, perhaps the effort of them doing the whole process for 10 years means that they only got this far. Whereas someone who didn't have that stigma and had a bit more help, a bit, they can get further. So now, even though they're would be equally qualified given an equal background they're not at, at this point because it's many years of accumulation of, of of effort and struggle right so what happens in i would say more practical situations is that yeah you get like 10 candidates one or two of them are women and those one or two women are qualified but they're at like 80 percent and then there's like one guy in the 10 who is like 95 percent or 90 95 percent and then you're kind of in this weird position so what do i take the better person who unfortunately is now a man because of their their let's say privileged background of having the resources and the support um versus going for the women who is slightly less actually less qualified but I understand she'd had to go through a lot more to get to where she is, right? And then you're kind of like, uh, I don't know what's the best decision because it's actually a lot gray. Or... Yeah, but also diversity in the work environment also shows to be beneficial usually. So right. that then brings a bit more points to the woman, right? If, if there's no women in the institute, for example. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's not... A, 
question that has an answer. I'm just yeah, curious. yeah. It's, it's it's for sure hard. It's not easy to say not this is right and this is wrong and it's like it's always hard. But yeah, because oftentimes I think when you get at the policy level, it's very idealized. But then once you get to the actual person who needs to make the decision, it's it's so gray that it's it it's very difficult, like actually difficult, right? And and then optics and then, you know, meeting the standards of the university. And then also you want someone who will do the job because it affects you in turn, right? So all these things get very hard. And I can agree some people just go with the gut decision. That's what you said, Maria, right? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. who do I think will do the best job? Who's more similar to me that I can communicate with them effectively? Mm -hmm. Who has shared experience so I don't need to explain to them every single thing? like every day for two years right so all these things they just go for that and that ends up being someone who's exactly like the person hiring right <laughs> which is unfortunate that means if you have 80 percent men then you get 80 percent men hired right mm -hmm. so i i agree it's a very hard it's a very hard thing to talk at, at that level but i think one other thing you mentioned maria which is very interesting is like one you mentioned like the the reasons for leaving like if women feel lonely and then they have another part of their life that they want to focus on and they just say eh, well this thing i i will give up and then they they leave science and i think in your experience or what you've seen do you think that is a common thought like is that something that really influences whether women choose to stay in science well, it's hard for me to say. But I don't know. I don't know many women in science. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But do uh, you normally have? Do have you had this thought? Yes. Like, more or less. Yeah. Yes, I I see that being a bit of a reason. Like, uh, when it's not, I really enjoy my research. So mm -hmm. For PhD, no. Uh, but uh, so now I'm going to move um, for one year to San Diego, and I was thinking like. Are there gonna be any women there? Like I hope so. I've been having meetings with like six guys. Right. Uh, I've never heard of a woman, but uh, I hope there's one there as well. But it's something that I, you know, it crossed my mind. Like, is there gonna be a woman or not there? You know. And then right. when I went to this conference, that I said we were sixty people, maybe like thirty-five in person, and we were three women, and we were all PhDs, so no older researchers, uh, mm. older yeah, common stuff. And we were like, oh, we're so happy that it was, we we're all so happy that we saw each other because like, ah, oh, okay, someone, uh, some other women, I'm not the only one this time. So I think the question is more like, well, when you have had these thoughts, what, uh, obviously you're still here in science, so what has kind of motivated you to to stay, right? Like, I think yeah, that's, I, that's a bit more insightful. Yeah. Uh, and my motivation at the moment is high. Uh, but I don't know, in 10 years, I'll be tired of everything. I don't know. But now I just really have a passion for fusion because I also really like, um, so I think it's a very interesting technology, like the engineering, right? You have the coldest uh, place on, you know, the universe next to the hottest one uh, in our solar system, at least. Uh, and I think it's amazing. And also, of course, then we have the novel cause of fusion, you know, uh, so we don't have emissions, we don't contribute mm -hmm. to climate change. Um, so it's a both things. I find it very interesting, but also the cause of future. Yeah. But this is interesting because uh, we kind of had different experience also on this, in a sense that I had a lot of girls in my master. I mean, a lot, some, uh, because we were not many people. <laughs> I had I had girls during the bachelor, during the master, but I personally, I kind of like, experience that I have found a bit better with guys it's easier for me and then so I I kind of like if I think about it my old group of friends from the master and the the, the bachelor they're all guys except for one girl and so I kind of like when I came here and I saw there were no other girls except for her or whatever I don't I, I don't I didn't feel like oh, I'm alone so that's a problem but I don't know, maybe maybe it's just because you can if you can choose, then you're like, whatever happened, it's fine. 
But if you are like if it's someone imposed to you, no, you you only have that, then it's different. Then maybe I would have felt alone in, in the same way. Hmm. And, and so, yeah. Yeah, because for me also, when I was younger, like, uh, not too young, but like already at 14, 15, I started maybe having more guy friends than girlfriends. Um, so it's also very easy for me to bind with guys. Uh, bind with guys, the bond. <laughs> Get along, uh, get along with, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but when I, yeah, so the was two and a half years and then a PhD without you was another half a year at least. It was three years, you know, and then it's like, yeah, I'm starting to feel it, you know, at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe now, for example, that she's gone. Yeah, no, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, maybe I would feel it. I would be super alone. Uh, no one understands me here. <laughs> <laughs> Even then oh, you yeah, arrived, yeah. like, I started dressing up better. They're like, oh, nice. No one can appreciate my clothes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those sort of things are important for like your work environment. You spend a lot of time like at the office, right? And so it, it, it whether you like it or not, it is a part of your life in a very you know, substantial manner. So I get it that these experiences are helpful. Um, I also, I want to say this, like, because I think there is sort of, oof, there's two ways to take this topic. So I, I'll go pick one and we'll get to the other one later. It's like the interaction of women with other women in science, right? Um, and I've heard from a lot of, I was part of, I was inside this IAEA conference on like women in, or I guess it was a meeting of some sort, women in science. And there was this effort that like, well, women should support other women, right? But sometimes I think that it, it becomes like an extra burden in some ways because like not every guy in science has the mandate to support other guys right like the, some do by the nature of their of who they are some don't by the nature of who they are and it's okay to be either but yet i feel there's a lot of pressure on on women to support other women and whether that's I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it may be a necessary thing. But what's your what's your thoughts on that? So I don't see pressure, but yeah, we are in very uh, junior positions, so, so it's different. But if they would ask me to support my women in science, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's quite nice. I would like to do it. Um, but maybe if you're doing it for 10 years and you have so many things to do, it's a burden, but well, like in my sense, in the sense that there are already so few women mm -hmm. in like the sciences in general, at least that it's sort of like, as you said, they're, they're already struggling a lot of against a lot of like sis more systemic biases or, you know, just struggling in general, also with the thing of being alone or being isolated or whatever. And then now on top of that, they have extra responsibility to, you know, be a good role model and and it just seems like things just stack on top of each other and yeah, it becomes a lot pressure i see that maybe yeah yeah i don't feel kind of like on in this sense a lot of pressure in the sense that i read i mean if i see someone that i can relate to uh, I, I feel more into like supporting them whatever general situation uh but it's so for women when if i see someone but in general not only in science but a woman dealing with something and i and i probably understand better what, what she's dealing with and i know always what is how it is going through and i also know there are some women that doesn't support other women a lot because it's, it's different it, it's difficult sometimes to not feel the competition Mm. And so I try to do my best to always support when I can other women and I do it with great joy because I feel like if I will be there I will appreciate it a lot and and then it's it's nice to have like this healthy relationship with co-workers or in general with other women in your life because it's really nice to to have someone to support you and understand you and what you're going through and like yeah, without without feeling like the competition, and it's not that it's not it's not that easy to have this in general. I guess yeah. also it's like um, because there's fewer women. So someone told me once that everybody wants to feel special. I said no, I don't want to feel special. I don't have that need at all. 
And he's like, Maria, you're the only one woman in a, in the PhD or in the master's. So you're very special just because of that. I'm like, hmm, okay, that is true. So yeah, like, yeah, I guess yeah. for you, like special is kind of more the norm than the than the odd thing. And so you actually have a better drive to or a, a stronger drive to not be that special, right? Like because it's just sort of like you see what it means to be special a bit more. Or somebody yeah. who's never been special, cause they're like, I want that, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But maybe then you know, then maybe when you can, I guess, like you were saying, that maybe other women is hard to support sometimes. Maybe it's, that's because that's why, because then you become less special because you're more. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Right. Uh, yeah, but I had the experience in science, really good experience in science with another woman. Like I always felt. They were there for me and they kind of like tried to help me yeah. whatever in many situations with conferences like my supervisor she's always super nice and other colleagues that I have like other maybe friends from Milan like the woman always like we try to to support each other and like still remain in contact and because it's also this kind of like maybe war maybe it also had like for me a lot of having like a, a lot of female friends doing the phd not in the netherlands but still around europe and mm -hmm. still can be able to hang out with um, some some in a way but always calling her texting them whatever that's also nice mm -hmm. yeah. and i felt also the same like support from the other girls in the uh, conference so we mm -hmm. them we said oh let's Keep in touch, you know, there's not many of us, so this is, let's try to. Yeah, that's, that, that's true. To, to bypass, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a very good question because I think, and it confuses me. So this is like more a question from me. Um, it's like, what is support? Like, what does that mean? Right. I understand for each individual person, it's different, but like, even just in general, what I get confused, right? Because some people at least i'm more inclined to say like well support means helping you do your work right so if you ask me a question like can you do this for me yes right that's my version of supporting you mm -hmm. but maybe that's not the version of support that you actually want or think no. of as support <laughs> no <they're Right>? not. <laughs> No, exactly. Right. So that's confusing. So like, could you, maybe you can provide some like for yourselves, like uh, what is support? Like, what is it? And it's, for me, it's just like, yeah, I'm here, you know, let's try to keep in touch. That's, that's really enough, to be honest. Like, um, I'm just willing to, to, yeah, to help. I don't, but to, like, not to even help, but just to have a connection. I think that's nice. Like, because I really like this, the three of us in the conference. Who tried to to be together as well, and we even took a picture of the three of us, and that's just which is nice. Like, I'm not sure if you can even call this support. It's just like I mean, it's friendly. Yeah. Like also, if you're not a friend with this person, like still like being supportive, being like friendly, smile, like be like encouraging. And you can do it with a stranger also, or like especially doing a conference, like maybe you're presenting and you see someone that is like smiling and it's like 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 he cares about what you're saying. And it's it's really nice and it's really good. And also like when then maybe you become friends or whatever, uh just text me like how you doing, how it's how it's going, and yeah, but, but the conference with the talk, like like I remember both of them then came to me and said, Oh, very nice. Yeah, exactly. Now, like, oh, that's so nice. Yeah, exactly. Like after maybe you ask, like, how's it going? Yeah, exactly. Like if you're good, you were super good, nice, you did a great job. Or just yeah. hearing also like, oh I'm so glad I'm not the only girl woman here. You now you're also here. Yeah. It's also, it's also nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's it's more like the social aspect, like just to know somebody there's somebody to talk to or just to know somebody is like you know rooting for you kind of like yeah good job yeah. right well, is that because, i mean it's already super hard to find another girl in your kind of field right. but if you find a girl that is doing what you're doing and you can ask actually have on the word that's kind of impossible yeah. <laughs> right i see yeah, okay. never had that. <laughs> yeah no it, it's it's also confusing right because i think um of course when when guys support each other, I mean, I think that's also included, but that's sort of like a minority aspect. That's sort of like a, a minimal thing. But the, the more support that when we say support, 
um, is more like, can you help me do this job? If I need this thing done, will you be able to help me do it or do it for me or, you know, spend your time working on the project? That's what when we say support or or at least helping me with getting my work done on the project. But then I think it gets confusing because then if if men hear like, oh, we need to support women and they're just like, well, I, I know how I support other guys. So maybe I'll just do that for women. And it doesn't seem to work, right? And it's just like, what? what? <laughs> like, I'm confused now. Yeah, because so, you, know, you, you, you want to do it for us because we are women. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, but that's the thing, right? So that's where, like, the language is different between, uh, like, it, the, the, the sentiment, the concept is actually different. But in the language, we use the same word. And that's very confusing, right? So uh, it's, I have to say that, for example, in Deeper, I met really supportive guys also mm -hmm. in our PhD group, and they and they really uh, make me feel like not not only I, it was okay. I mean, I was not in the wrong place, let's say, but mm -hmm. also I was really welcome. Like yeah. I remember they were like like saying like, "Oh, it's so nice to have like more girls because you just bring different vibes." And also for in the social skills, maybe we kind of like always organize nice stuff to go together and people really appreciated that. And mm -hmm. I, a lot of people told me like, yeah, it's, it's nice. Or I remember some people also saying, it's nice that you kind of like sometimes dress nice to come to war because it, it feels like, it, it feel like it's a special moment in a sense or it makes it a little, a little bit better and it'd be stupid, but I, I like, thanks for that. And then like small thing that make you feel like you're really welcome. Mm. And I think so that at the end we are really lucky to work where we are working. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I, 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 even if we are not a lot, feel like I feel like it's a big family in a sense. Yeah, I think we also like both of us really tried that uh, yeah. everybody would hang out and uh, do stuff outside of work as well. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think we appreciate it. I think yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but you, it was really already like an open environment. It was not that mm. hard. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like people were really like super, always super nice and open and like, yeah. Yeah, I would I would say that 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 is more, at least I would define it just being sociable, being open, being friendly, right? Creating a good work environment. But I would not like for just myself in my own head, and this might be my fault, not guys in general it's just that i wouldn't classify that as support right that's just not so somebody says you need to support someone i wouldn't think that's what i need to do right that's just me being friendly that's just me being social that's me wanting to talk or getting to know because someone maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> i don't know it's just i'm just spewing off well, like being, i think that yeah. being friendly and kind with the person is really supporting the person because it just made make it better like if you have a shitty day and someone comes to your office and it's like hey how you doing how you doing you want to have come together and talk a bit that that's support for me right. to be honest like so and you do it always so, I mean, yeah, you you support us a lot. Yeah, the coffee uh, break. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you support us in the, our definition, but also in your definition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do both. I, I yes. jack jack of all trades. None of it. Yeah, it's work. covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but like, so it's. I think that's a good um definite, at least a good concept to put out there because I think that when people hear the word support, it means different things to everybody. Yeah, and they do what they think is supportive, but maybe that's not the definition that actually means something to someone else, right? So, I I think that it's it's good to to make that conversation open in some ways, because indeed, yeah, like as 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 you said, I do it, but I wouldn't call it support, but you guys see it as support, right? So, <laughs> it it just happened to work out, but if somebody gave me the mandate, you need to support, I would be like, okay. I'll I'll help them with some work, I guess. Right. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it it's very yeah. That difference does need to be uh, talked about, and I think that also one thing, the other angle that I wanted to approach it was actually you brought it up, Laura, already. It's more the competition, right? That that is also something that happens. Also, although 
uh, I guess women would love to support each other and they should. Um, there's also this internal like competition aspect that affects some people. So have you, have you either of you felt that or do you, do, uh, and if you do, how do you handle it or what do you do? For me, I, I have experienced it outside uh, the work slash studying environment a lot with women but i have to say like either at university either in here the or in general like conferences like the women that i found were super nice really like really supportive as i said and really like no competition and they really also in a sense taught me how to be a better a better woman a better <laughs> in this sense because i really met like since the beginning really nice people and they were always like never I never had the competition. I will they were always like helping maybe when we was to university with notes, like whatever, or like helping study or uh, like I, I really I really found really nice people that were ready to help. And we are I'm still friends with these people and also still now we try to I don't know, we met conference and we always stay like front line to the presentation and like it's but yeah I, I I never felt also with Maria I never felt competition like with, with her I always felt like her was supporting me and I always try to support her and yeah because I really um I mean as I said I really know kind of like what she's going through and like I will like to have that help so I can like try to give it to her um yeah yeah, yeah like I was really trying when, when he came I was like yeah no I was and be very welcoming as well. No, yeah. I remember that every time you would go abroad, you bring me something. And I was like, oh my god, you <laughs> sound <laughs> so. Yeah, it's easy to, to 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 go to this competition thing. Yeah, but yeah, so it's really important to really like try to make make it like not like clear that it's, there is like no competition and just support. Yeah, I also I don't think I felt competition as well to be honest. Mm. Uh, not even outside. Maybe a little bit, but I don't know. I think I would like to be. Mm. Yeah, because I think that it's it's also, yeah. I mean, I have heard stories where some women feel like, like even if you're making a presentation and then someone, another woman in the audience asks you a question and it's like a particularly tough question, it's like, you feel kind of attacked even though like betrayed even right like it's <laughs> it's not yeah because it's like okay yeah. it's a good question but like that it came from another woman because kind of like uh you just like really right so i don't know if that's a thing or if it's just particular people have are more sensitive to that or not right but it I, it does exist it's interest. well like if you haven't experienced it that's great because that means that you're doing things right, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but I I can I can guess. I maybe, think, yeah. And maybe if you experience a bit of competition, they always have like you look at things with a different perspective, and maybe you look at them with a negative in a negative way. So maybe if a woman like ask you a question and you're like that, she's just she just want to let me down. And if you have a good look at it, maybe you're like, oh, she want to. Like she she really listened to my presentation and she wanted to like I mean some people appreciate to have questions to there because it means it's it was interesting. I actually appreciate when people ask me things if they are not difficult. <laughs> but because it means that you 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 listen to my presentation, you are interested in it, and also a presentation with a lot of questions is a good presentation. Of usually. Course. Yeah. I mean not always, but usually. And so yeah, it maybe maybe it's also a bit personal in a sense that it's like how you behave and how you perceive stuff and if you had bad um, uh, experience then maybe you are more you yeah you're more like yeah you, you look at things with a kind of like a bad vibe hmm. yeah for sure I mean like I don't think anybody uh, it's rare that somebody asks a question with like malicious intent, right? Like it's generally there's there's more there than like than 
just two people interacting at a very professional scientific level is yeah. either they they have some back history where like it's kind of like a bit weird right so generally most times it's just people saw this thing they're curious about it they asked you and maybe they weren't particularly careful with their words um but it's with good intent right so yeah. On, on this, I remember yeah. you told me like when you went to the conference in Padua. Yeah. 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 So the, actually, there, there's two things. So one of them, like sometimes I have a question and it's like a long question, and I'm really like questioning the work, and that has happened. Mm -hmm. Like even sometimes in your presentation, in group meetings, and it's like a long question. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm for doing these outsides because I don't want to come across as like in a bitch, you know. So mm -hmm. I honestly that has. <laughs> But only with me, like if I you have to do the question to me, you have not to only with you, like also the conference is like yeah. yeah, I first I feel more comfortable asking questions if there is is a woman presenting, hmm. and I definitely notice that, and I don't think I'm the only one because uh, as you mentioned mm -hmm. there was this conference in Parva, and then when there was a woman speaker, then a lot of girls started asking questions and not for the other speakers, and that was very interesting to see. Yeah. Maybe not just because there was a woman who was a speaker, but also because then the first woman asked the question, then okay, if she asked a question, I can also ask the question. Mm -hmm. So I don't know which, what was the cause, but I think it's related. Yeah, but you see, you saw it with like, if it was a nice thing, because like, if it's yeah. a woman, you feel more comfortable asking questions, not if it's a woman, so I want to put that heart down. No, indeed, like, yeah. yeah. But I know that some questions, if they are very hard, uh, like if you're questioning even like mm -hmm. the project itself. Yeah, yeah. then... No, I would not do that publicly. Mm -hmm. Also, meters yeah. will to a man, I guess. Yeah. Well, no, in general, so no. So <laughs> no. Yeah. But definitely not for what I also go for a man. Yeah, yeah, but I remember I was I was a bit like I start questioning when you said that because I would probably also be more comfortable answering a question if it's a woman presenting mm -hmm. because if it's a man, I always have this I'm, that it's me, but I always have this like I am. The stupid one is not understanding. Me. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm like, yeah, I, I don't want, I don't want to look like I'm a stupid one. <laughs> and I can probably, so I won't ask. Yeah, oh, I mean, that's that's one of the things, right? Like, uh, in general, like guys as well, don't ask questions because they don't want to seem stupid, right? Like, they think it's a very basic thing, and they should already know. So they're just like, okay, I have this question. I'm not gonna ask. I'm just gonna go back to my desk and read about it right, on the internet yeah. or something. But it actually is worth asking most of the time because there's someone else in the room who probably has the same question, right? <laughs> or, or if not, then it's just a good learning experience. Yeah. But I do agree with you that sometimes when someone else has asked a question, then you feel more comfortable asking a question as well. Yeah. And maybe it it's double so for uh, females, right? So if you another see another woman ask a question, then you're like, ah, okay, maybe I can also ask my question. But I don't know how strongly that plays. Yeah. Have you ever had that feeling yourself? Or is it just something you've seen? I think I had the feeling as well. Yeah. Uh... It's because it was a woman speaker, and so and then also the question came from other uh, female participants. So I just like okay, I I cannot explain what the feeling is, but somehow I'm still more comfortable asking the question. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, but actually, so maybe I'm going a bit to another topic now. But um, we saw something that was a bit unpleasant once, uh, which was someone presented. It was a female speaker, and then. Uh, a man asked a question and he asked the word first and she gave the answer and then he started asking to the male colleague of this female speaker instead of to her when it was about her work mm -hmm. and then it was very uncomfortable to see and and the, the colleague kept saying oh it's you know should it's her she already answered like you should just hear what he's saying and then he kept going like no no I just don't want to take on talk only with the male mm -hmm. colleague and that was very yeah, I think that uh, last generation really like the woman there really felt this this gap like way more than us also, yeah. and mm -hmm. because yeah, I also see like my my supervisor always share thing with me of stuff that happened to her also to help me dealing with them in the future, and for her it was really hard and she she's still struggling because she's still the only woman uh, almost and she's now part of this really important. 
a uh, group of people, um, how do I say, like, um, committee, committee. Mm. and it's a European thing, and she's the, the only woman, and she's also a bit younger than the other, and, and she can, and, and so she, she, she can't feel the pressure of like being like the woman and the younger person yeah. like the group and she always feel like they are kind of like thinking that they are a bit more expert than her so they push her a bit like she she's not and she's like i don't know she's a, and really, she's a really tough woman yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. she's really strong and yeah but i guess you have to be if you go maybe what she, she had to so. become like this yeah you know? yeah yeah, that's also a good question, right? Because I, I mean, there are a couple of like, let's say, senior scientists who are who are women that I know in fusion, and they are like, they are tough, <laughs> right? But like, not not. I'm not saying that in a mean way. I mean, like, it, it it they you can tell they have a different character to them. Like, yeah, but because it's really like the generation does so much. Like I can see also like our coworker, the young guys are so I I I really more comfortable with us and like there are some older than that you can tell they are really like they're not comfortable not used to dealing with girls or like to see women like women uh working with them about this stuff talking about science so uh and, and if i see it with their generation maybe like when like mm, for, with the older generation it's even worse probably so yeah, I think you really like at least things are are better now, and I hope they're going like we are going in the right direction. To be honest, but I, I've also been told that someone wasn't comfortable to be in the coffee corner where I was yeah, yeah, as that, I was a woman. Yeah, that's was like what the hell? That happened also. Yeah, that happened to to us with the person that was not comfortable, and I felt really bad mm. because I. I felt it was my fault, to be honest, and I didn't want him to be to feel uncomfortable for me, and I felt really bad. I see, but it's not it's not nice because it's like it's your fault, but it's not your fault. So and you're like, okay, yeah. Well, it's just just like at some point, is it is is it is you just being you the problem, which is very hard to deal with, right? Yeah. Because like, that then it's like, what 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 can I do right yeah but, also I maybe could try to make it better maybe not yeah. wearing skirt or maybe not wearing like whatever just dressing more like sporty or less feminine I don't know hmm. but then I would be like yeah yeah I don't know it is worth it I, it is his problem or my problem I mean yeah but I think this Sorry, I didn't see it as my problem. I'm yeah, sorry. no, we have to. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm a woman. What can I do? You know, yeah, I exist. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in some ways, I would agree with you. It would seem it would be like unnecessarily, you know, giving in to someone else's. I, I don't want to say neurosis, but like you know, just like the it it would be limiting yourself because of what some other people think, which is not the right way to approach a problem, in my opinion. Um, but at the same way, like, I think I read some study somewhere, um, which is, okay, this is going to be controversial. I'm just going to say this straight up. Um, it said that after the introduction, or, or I guess the, the start of this Me Too movement, right, the amount of collaborations that female scientists got dropped, like, a significant amount not because of like people being against women and the blah 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 it was just that because now it became more risky quote unquote for guys to associate with women because who knows what is good or bad behavior and they can get called out for anything that they just refuse they just say it's not worth the risk i'm just not even going to engage so that was a very interesting study and I'm curious if that has also been your experience. Have you come across people who just say, well, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to, I don't know what this, what interaction we're going to have, and I don't want to be part of it. <laughs> like, has it happened to you? No, no. Not okay. Yeah, no. I, but I think I, I've experienced people that were less interested in 
maybe having like a like a talk or something with me because maybe they were not super comfortable of me being a woman. Okay. Yeah, well, then I got it in deeper. Yeah, so that's uh, okay. There are like I mean, some people were really okay and really welcoming, but I think some people were not. They don't even know how to de deal with the, with this in a sense. And I don't think there is like bad intention. It's just they don't, they are not used to like have to talk with girls or whatever. And so they just don't like it. So either if they do it, they, they kind of are super awkward or if they just try, they just don't do it. And that, that were like I have experienced and it's not, but it's not, I mean, if it's not, if bad intention, like under it, it's not that bad. It's just that, I mean, that's the problem where you are not the normality. So you just deal with it. Yeah. Not and I think this comes back to the fact that there's a reason why, let's say, the 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 women who are in the previous generations of, of scientists, they have this sort of character because it's just sort of, that's in some way, maybe they are naturally like that or what they've developed in order to survive. And being a pioneer in that sense yeah. is tough, but hopefully from them being there made it easier now a little bit, yeah. but there's still obviously work to be done, obviously, but like, you know, that, that is progress and they had to suffer that in some way to bring about the better future, right? It's it's and it's tough to say that like someone should suffer for it, but it's like that's a fact of reality, right? <laughs> yeah, and so I I think that that is that is exactly more the sentiment. Um, okay, well I think we've covered a fair amount of topics. We've been talking for a while, so I would like to wrap it up. Though there's probably much more things to say. Do you have any final words? Uh, final comments? final stories to share well so i guess the final story is that um to share is that um so maybe it's not, it's not the final it's not a good one to be the final person if i want to right but it's, uh, so i don't feel like people um did not want to work with me because i was a woman which I but i felt like there was one time that i was you know, screamed at by a colleague mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure he would not have talked with me like that if i was a man uh, and it would be very uncomfortable. Uh, and he did it in front of other people, including Laura as well. And that was, uh, yeah, I really felt like this is happening because I'm a woman. Hmm. And that was, I think, the, like one of the first times also that I felt that me being a woman had an impact on this proceedings. Yeah, I, I think I got this sometimes, like being treated a bit different. And whatever, if they do it, like maybe are there to like more kind with you in a strange way, though. It's like, no, it's still not nice. You still like feel like you are not the quality and it's not normal for you to be in here, mm -hmm. uh, there. And I got it sometimes, but as I said, it's like, I guess it's like part of being a pioneer in a sense, like for us, it's not that bad because obviously we are not the real pioneer, but. <laughs> still um and so i, I it's fine also because i have to say that many people may, may, maybe they start with a strange attitude but they learn uh, then when you um, show them like how like what is the bad how to behave or in general that you are not a person and whatever they then then they they are like super nice and they they kind of like learn how to deal and and then i feel super good like when a person like starts maybe awkward and doesn't know what to do and he's maybe also told me like I don't know what to do because like I don't want I, I it's just it's strange uh I never had like female colleagues so it's strange for me uh, I don't know but and then this person really end up really being comfortable with you and having like then then it's really nice I really mm -hmm. feel like I'm 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 actually doing something nice yeah and I, I think that that's part of it is like being able to draw your own personal boundaries uh in that sense and also understanding that 
sometimes these behaviors are just due to lack of experience rather yeah. than you know fundamental like i have this viewpoint um and i want to enforce it on others right so it, it's something to know especially for 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 younger scientists as well getting into the field um you're also dealing with younger people in general right and it doesn't mean that older people are necessarily wiser but they've at least had more lifetime to learn the lesson whereas young people may have not had that lesson learned just yet right so they're more likely to make mistakes of this nature um so it's it's good to know and and, and as you mentioned there's still quite a long way to go in my opinion at least so i mean the, the fight is not over, but definitely things are improving. And I hope they, they continue to. So on that note, thank you both for joining. I know it was, you know, a tough topic to approach, but mm -hmm. I'm glad. Yeah, you I, it. Yeah. I hope because, I mean, this is our experience and we just bad with briefing. So I hope it was interesting. And because we, we, we didn't say like truth or statistics or, or stuff because we don't feel like it's, it's not our job it's not what we study so yeah we just try to to just make you look from our perspective in sense yeah and i think that that was that was the point and you both did very well uh in in sharing your experiences i hope that people listening um, they can make whatever opinion they want of it, but that they can at least relate to some of it. And uh, this will help open the conversation that a lot of people need to have, uh, either with their supervisors or with their communities. Um, that would be a very nice outcome out of this. But even, even if not, then I thank you both for taking the time to join and uh, having the bravery to share your stories. I think that that's... Yeah. Thanks, right, and uh, also, you know, just that we also appreciate our uh, male colleagues a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no, man, I'm sure they do. We said it, we said you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank no, you. No, thank we said it, yeah. I appreciate yeah, we, you, too. We were very lucky. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the, the, especially the young people are really, really nice and welcoming and supportive, and they always try. Also, we spoke about this a lot. So they are also interested to speak about this stuff with us, to have our perspective. And that's also really nice. Yeah, and I hope that conversation continues. Uh, not, it doesn't just end here with this podcast, but yeah. going into the future. That's how we make things better, right? <laughs> okay, then. And to everybody listening out there, thank you for tuning in. I hope this conversation has been insightful. And uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.